day. Welcome to the ADF Architecture TV series. My name is Chris Muir. I'm an ADF product manager working for Oracle Corporation. As you can see, beautiful picture here of my home state. Uh, in fact, this is a picture from my local beaches here in Perth in Western Australia. And I could be down the beaches today, surfing, enjoying this sort of uh, coastline, but here I am presenting to you. And it just goes to show this Oracle's dedication, its staff's dedication to providing good content to customers when, hey, I could be on the beach. So what am I going to cover in today's episode? It is an extension of the previous episodes on application module design in the context of ADF business components. And what I'd like to discuss with you today is two concepts. One, future-proofing your AM design or your application module design. How can we configure our application modules such that it gives us some wiggle room in the future? Now, flip that right around, I'd like to um, discuss something that's a little bit different from that. What happens if you, in fact, inherit a legacy ADF application and the application module design's already been dictated for you? And maybe in looking at that design and the actual production system, you've started to realize you're getting connections and scalability issues because of the way application modules are configured. So I'd like to look at future-proofing your AM design and also legacy system AM design in this very brief uh, ADF Architecture TV episode today. So let's crack on and get right on into it. So from the previous episodes of the ADF Architecture TV uh, series where we were looking at the application module design, we talked about that for most applications it would be satisfactory to have a single root application module. Yet there's a couple of problems with that approach. Now, yes, we only want you know, a single connection per user session and limit the number of transactions, but from a developer's perspective, our problem is, is that the developers might start lumping or dumping numerous tens, if not hundreds, of view objects under one root application module. In addition, at some point in the future of our application, maybe not in the initial build, but some maintenance phase, there might be a reason to move to multiple root application modules. Maybe there's a new feature that Oracle injects into ADF that makes it very compelling. Can't tell you what that is, but you never know. So we kind of have a couple of issues here about putting everything into a root application module. How can we solve that? Well, one solve is to think about a feature that ADF BC already gives to you, and that is the nested application module. The nested application module was designed to allow you to group logically related view objects under each nested AM. So say you've got an application that deals with HR and payroll, to put view objects against the nested AM for HR, to put view objects against the nested, uh, nested AM for payroll, and then basically put them under one root application module. So this solves the issue of developers basically putting too many view objects into one root AM. We nicely segment our application up. But in addition, we get a bit of future proofing in terms of our application module design here by using nested AMs. Because if you've used ADF enough, you'd know if you've actually configured or worked with a nested AM previously, not only can you use view objects under the nested AM of the root AM by dragging them in from the data control palette, but the data control palette also presents the nested AMs as a root application module in its own right, and you're free to drag the view objects in from that as well. Now, typically, you wouldn't do that because that would imply that you're creating multiple root AMs in your application and you'll start to get the connection and scalability issues that we talked about. So you would use just the normal VOs under the nested AM, the root AM, for most applications. But in the future, because you've used or configured those nested AMs, it's a relatively simple exercise of treating those nested AMs as root AMs because as senior ADF developers would know, you could just go into the data binding CPX file, create a new data control based on the nested AM, so it becomes a root AM, and then in any page where you were referring to a view object of that nested AM, you just need to remap it to that of the new root AM that was your nested AM previously. Now for beginners that might sound a little bit complex, but for most senior developers who have played around with root and nested AMs, you know it's just a bit of configuration that needs to be done on your side. So quickly here by nesting the, I should say nesting our view objects under our nested AMs and putting those under our root AMs, we can see not only have we got a better mechanism for grouping and aligning and um, basically saying which parts of our application view objects are aligned with, this will assist our developers, but we've also injected a future-proofing design into our application that we can quickly re-architect and reconfigure it to create multiple root application modules if we so desire. 
now what about exactly the opposite situation to what we just described where you're not building a new system but you inherit an adf system from some previous programmers and you need to maintain it now in that previous adf system maybe it was imported from jdeveloper 10.13 or even 11g the previous developers for whatever reason decided to have multiple root application modules which is not necessarily a mistake but in some cases it will be now as you know, one of the issues with having multiple root application modules is that, well, from a user session perspective, one user session can take out multiple connections and transactions and have multiple memory states for that one user session. And your scalability of your application might be, well, severely constrained. And this could be an issue. So how do you solve this? Well, it's really just the opposite to what we learned previously is what we're going to do now is rather than working with nested application modules what we're going to do with the multiple root application modules that the previous developers have created is you're going to create a brand new root application module and take the existing root application modules and nest them under that root application module and then from there you just need to reconfigure your data binding cpx files and potentially any iterators on the associated pages and now you've got the opportunity to, well, run at runtime all those, well, what were multiple root AMs under a single root AM that takes one connection out with a database for one user session. Sounds fantastic, doesn't it? But of course, you need to be very careful with this re-architecting of an existing system because maybe the original designers and developers really did need separate connections and transactions per user session. So you need to test, test, test your changes here very carefully to make sure you haven't actually injected new problems into your application where the developers previously assumed there were separate connections and transactions occurring. But as you can see here, again, root application modules and nested application modules can give you a lot of wiggle room in terms of architecting your application. And you can sort of change from one scheme to the other um, without too much work, um, well, besides the testing on your current development uh, team's behalf. So in this very short episode of the ADF Architecture TV channel today, we can see that using nested application modules and grouping them under root application modules is very much a best practice because it gives us so much wiggle room or the ability to re-architect our applications at a later point. In the following episode of the ADF Architecture TV channel, we're going to be looking at our last application module design set of topics, and that's going to be looking at the shared application module. And specifically in that episode, we're going to be looking at something that maybe you're not familiar with, is how to tune those shared application modules in order to increase the scalability of your overall ADF application. So thanks again for joining us on the ADF Architecture TV episodes, and I hope you'll join us in our next episode very soon.